Hey, it's Paula AZ and welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to be doing another non-spoiler review. Today is going to be on the second book in the Hunger Games series, Catching Fire. I already did a non-spoiler review for the first book in the Hunger Games series, The Hunger Games. So, if you haven't yet to watch that video, I will link it and I totally recommend it. Just a quick disclaimer before we get on to the review, I did want to say that if you have not read the first book or even watched the first movie, you should totally go ahead and do that before continue watching this video because there are some spoilers for that book that I have to say. Let's BTM right into it. So like I stated earlier, the book we'll be reviewing today is Catching Fire by Suzanne Collins. It's the second book in the Hunger Games series. This book is at a slower pace because there's so much information in this book and there's so much things that happen, but it was necessary and justifiable. So I'm going to do a super quick recap on the first book slash movie. So in the Hunger Games, Katniss Everdeen and Peter Millark were the tributes from District 12 for the 74th Hunger Games. Hunger Games was a survival of the fittest, so there could only be one survivor. Midway through the games, there was a rule change saying that there can be two victors as long as they are from the same district. So since Katniss and Peta were from the same district, they were able to survive together. At the very end, the game maker decided to change his mind again and say that there can only be one victor. This affected both Katniss and Peta because that meant only one of them would make it out after they spent time trying to work through it together. So Katniss pulls out these Nightlock berries that are extremely poisonous. She says that if Peta and her ate them at the same time, they'd die at the same time and there'd be no victor. And the capital ultimately, of course, wants a victor. So they're about to eat the berries when the game maker's like, nope, never mind, it's fine, you both can be the victors. So Katniss put up this act throughout the 74th Hunger Games, saying that she was in love with Peta. This was out of pity, so sponsors could send her and Peta resources and food. Peta was also saying that he was in love with Katniss and that he just adored her, but this was true for Peta. Peta genuinely loved her. So this leads on to the second book, which we're going to get into right now. So Katniss and Peta have just come home from the games. They are back in District 12. They're living in the Victor's Village. Not only are they living in the Victor's Village, but Haymitch is living in the Victor's Village, so the ultimate trio are neighbors, which is pretty awesome. So since Peta and Katniss won the Hunger Games together, they have to go on a victory tour together. This victory tour is when they go to every single district in Phnom, and they give speeches, and they thank that district for their tributes, and they kind of accept the whole they won and that they're a victor. This tour is going to be a lot more complicated than they thought. So at the end of the very first book, since Katniss manipulates the game by saying it's either both of us or none of us, people are thinking that they can manipulate the capital and the ruling and the government as well. So on accident, Peta and especially Katniss initiate and spark almost a rebellion against the capital. So of course, this isn't going to sit well with anybody in the government. Katniss is kind of put in this tough situation. So the government officials come to Katniss and say, hey, if you don't act like on this tour that what you did for the Hunger Games was because you're madly in love with Peta that you can't bear the thought of living without him. You're head over heels for him. Everybody you love is in danger. Gail, Prim, your mom, they'll all be in danger. And this is obviously not good for Katniss. Katniss loves her family. She doesn't want her family to be in danger. Her family means everything to her. After all, she volunteered so her sister could survive. Of course, this is super simple for Peta because Peta genuinely loves her and has always cared for her. Katniss never really felt that way. She was always with her family and Gail. So on this tour, a lot of things take place that confuse Katniss and her emotions and she feels very conflicted. She has PTSD from the previous Hunger Games. So in this tour, she gets flashbacks, anxiety, and nightmares on the basis of what happened in the Hunger Games. And luckily, since Peta went through something very similar, he's there to help her out. Since he genuinely cares for her, it's nothing for him. But to her, she feels very conflicted. She's like, am I pretending to love Peta because of my family? Or do I genuinely love Peta? Katniss goes through this tour with 
with Peta and Hamish and Evie. Evie's back. The tour is over. It's kind of a success. They're somewhat convincing the capital and the government that they're truly in love. So they come back home to District 12. Katniss and Peta, especially Katniss, are in the middle of planning something pretty big and pretty exciting and pretty interesting. And at this point, it's been a year since she came back from the 74th Hunger Games. So now it's time for the 75th Hunger Games. Now, let's hold up, let's wait. I need to give a disclaimer, a fair warning. Something that I'm about to say happens both in the book and the movie. What I'm about to say and talk about is not on the back of the book, but when you watch the trailer for Catching Fire, at the end of the trailer, like the last bit of the trailer, it reveals what I'm about to say. So I did decide to include it in this review just because it is something quite big, but not to where I'm going to spoil it for you guys. So this is a semi-spoiler, I guess you could say. So if you're not looking for a semi-spoiler, you don't want this to be spoiled, I would just exit out the video, and I hope you enjoyed the book. Those of you who stayed, thank you. Let's move forward. So, like I was saying, it's the 75th Hunger Games. And I'm not going to go into details how exactly. But Katniss and Peta have to go back into the games. They're tributes for the 75th Hunger Games. They're doing it all over again. Cue the suspenseful music. It's really crazy how it comes down to it, how and why they're in the games. So they have to go back into the games, and they have to go back into the arena, and they have to do what they did in the 74th Hunger Games and the 75th Hunger Games. But the 75th Hunger Games has a huge twist. Like, it's absolutely ginormous. It's not the same as the 74th Hunger Games, and everything that they thought they gained through the 74th Hunger Games may not be so beneficial in these games. So, just like in every Hunger Games, there's preparation that is involved. So, Katniss has to go through training along with PETA. They have to go through interviews together. They have to give speeches. There's so much that they have to do and prep. Of course, Cinna, our awesome fashion designer, comes back and is helping Katniss get ready for all this preparation for the Hunger Games. He's the one that will dress her right before she goes into the arena. So it's really exciting to see Cinna come back as a role. We also have the host from The Hunger Games come back as a role. If you read the first book, you would know that we don't have a game maker anymore, so we meet a new game maker, which is, he's really cool. He's a new character. I'm not going to give too many details, but he's important. We also meet some other characters throughout the preparation for The Hunger Games that um, are very important in the rest of Katniss's development as a character and the rest of Katniss's journey. I'll name a couple. Uh, we have Finnick O'Dare and we have Joanna Mason. So I'm not going to spoil anything else. I'm not going to say anything else because that's the whole point of this review. I mean, not to spoil anything because it's a non-spoiler. So I hope I was helpful. I hope now you're going to go ahead and read the book or watch the movie. Of course, I totally recommend the book. The books are always better. If you found this video helpful, please give it a big thumbs up. If you are looking forward to reviews for the rest of the series, I totally would recommend to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know when I post those videos. Thank you guys so much for watching, and as Susan Collins slash Ify Trinket would say, may the odds be ever in your favor. Now we gotta pose for the thumbnail.